ease out of back up, buddy. I can't cut you out here. It won't help. What I definitely don't have time for today is for Cedar to get his head stuck in the fence a million times, which he did yesterday. We'll see. but your body doesn't like that's where I am this morning okay guys so today we're gonna talk about do we dehorn our goats do we disbud them do we not disbud them horns no horns how do we feel about disbudding what do you need if you want to disbud your goat about how much does our vet charge all those things mostly because the last week has been super annoying because all the baby goats Keep getting their head stuck in the fence. And after a couple of days, they kind of figure it out. But one goat has not. Cedar is about to drive me crazy, and I do not have time for him to get his head stuck 50 times in the fence today. But we'll talk about it. All right, this first. so done with this goat every day he's probably soaking wet it came a rainstorm while I went inside to do my three zooms zoom wearing anybody else out all day every day he's the only one like nobody else at this point is really getting stuck so this is a big reason people dehorn their goats guys and it's a legit reason when they're little, they get hung up in the fence. I have never had an adult horned goat, like Pixie, ever get hung in the fence. It's never been an issue. These little babies are used to being able to stick their head through. So that is a big thing about disbudding your goats. They get stuck in the fence. All right, let's go give everybody else breakfast that missed out. Hi, buddy. Good morning. So here is, this goat was disbudded, and these are what we call scurs. So his horns grew back, it wasn't a very good job, and they grew, grew back in a deformed way. So for him, they're not brittle, so that's not a big deal. But also, Patty has scurs. Um, this was done by a vet, and you can see how hers are twisted, are probably gonna need to be um, trimmed at some point. And Daisy also has skirts. So 
So that's a definite con, is that if you get your goat disbudded and it's not done well, their horns grow back and they grow back deformed and that kind of causes cause some problems. Like with Daisy, her horn grew almost into her eye. We had a bit removed. I'll link the video where I talk about that. And links are deformed. We've had goats that they're brittle, so they break really easily and bleed. So that's kind of a really big con for me and has been for us on our farm like every year. We've had bucks as well with skirts that have broken off at like at their head because they bucks will headbutt and fight and then it bleeds and then you're constantly dealing with having to spray something with you know an antiseptic and making sure that it doesn't get infected so just had a lot of really bad luck with skirts pixie stick best friend was my first goat that ever had horns um, like real full set of horns. I was very nervous because people had said um, they're dangerous, they're dangerous for the goat, they're dangerous for the goats that don't have horns, they're dangerous for people. This is a very skittish goat who to me would probably be a goat that people would be afraid of hurting them, getting hurt. I've absolutely had no issues with Pixie's horns, none. She got stuck a little bit in the fence when she was little. Once they were long enough where she couldn't stick her head through, wasn't a big deal. Um, I've not seen her get caught up on anything with those horns since she was probably four or five months old. So if you have small kids and horns are something that you're really concerned about or if you're an adult and you're concerned that horns will be a dangerous for you. I would say as long as the goat itself is not dangerous, horns aren't gonna be an issue. I've never had an issue with Pixie. She's so sweet. So Zelda, Zelda is disbudded. Poppy is disbudded. <laughs> Cece is disbudded. Nani is disbudded. And Bunny. Bunny is also disbudded. All these were done, their disbudding were done by breeders that have been disbudding for a really long time. They're good at it, they're consistent, they're able to have these nice clean disbuddings where horns don't grow back. Disbudding is, it's really something that's hard for me personally to stomach. I hate it. I hate doing it, that's why I haven't done it myself, even though I know that I probably could effectively disbud my girls. But I hate it. Like I physically hate going through the process. You got on your face this morning. Oh, <laughs> some buzz. So I just kind of hate it. And so I have gotten to where in the last two years I said I'm not gonna do it myself because I won't be aggressive enough to get the horns completely gone. Because all my boys just their horns grew back perfectly. It was just, you know, it just didn't work. Are you pretty? I pre me. Clothes chewer. Um, so I took him to the vet. Our vet, our large animal vet that we use 95% of the time charges $10. It was well worth it. I was like, even if it's $100 a year with 10 babies, I'm gonna take him, I'm gonna get him all disbudded. But then, what the thing about our large animal vet is you don't know who you're gonna get. So there are like 10 vets and different people work every day, and it's not an appointment vet system, it is a, um, it's like a walk-in clinic, and you just drive in and you wait your turn. They are not super familiar with Nigerians, and if you don't get an older vet at our particular clinic, which most of them don't work the clinic, they go out on farm visits because they're, they're kind of requested. Um, it, this guy was too timid, and he had the same problem that I had which meant our horn screw back, didn't they, Patty girl? But you're okay. And I'll put in a picture of Poppy's mom, Violet, right here. She passed away two years ago, so I don't have her anymore, and you guys have never seen her. I took to a different vet, which was the vet that we were using at that time. 
and her horns did not grow back, but Violet almost went blind. So the vet that um, did hers, they put the babies to sleep. And so there was not a good gauge of how well the goat was doing. She had some swelling in her brain and she um, almost went blind. We had to have the vet out for an emergency visit um, because of that. And so that really kind of put me off to using that particular vet. They've broken this, like this used to cover up this window and they have had the most fun poking their head through there. So for us, last year I decided we're gonna have horns and I'm gonna deal with it. And it's really been fine. And again this year I decided we're gonna do horns. The caveat is if you're selling these babies, babies with, or goats with horns can't go to shows. So if your kid wants to show 4-H or if they want to do um, ADGA, American Dairy Goat Association shows, or any kind of goat shows, the, they have to be dehorned. They absolutely cannot have horns to be shown. Or if they have horns, so if they have a skirt, it can only be like, I think an inch tall. And goat's horns, if you didn't know, have a blood vessel that runs through them. And so when I took Daisy to get her horn trimmed, the vet was like very hesitant he was like, we have to trim it because it was like right here at her eye. But he did not want to trim it down to the skull to get rid of the horn completely. And he explained like it's going to be a bloody mess. And I was like, I'm good with it. Just trim the top so it will just grow straight and not end her eye. She had actually broken it off so there was no blood in that area of her head. So it worked out well. You just have breakfast. You did. Dehorning is kind of an intense process, just budding. You're burning, what you're doing, if you don't know, is you're taking a hot iron and you're burning the horn tissue and killing it um, on the baby's skull. And that's a really effective way to get rid of um, horns when babies are little. It's a lot less invasive than if you have to go and trim their horns as adults. I would not recommend unless it's absolutely necessary for the welfare of the animal to dehorn an animal when it has full-size horns. It's just kind of a horrible process. Um, but just budding, really guys, it's not a big deal. You do it, you put them back with mom and in two minutes they are totally fine. They're usually more pissed off about being held in a kid box and restrained than they are about the actual horn being burned off. But it is something that you need to spend a lot of time researching and learning about because it is dangerous and you could kill the animal if you don't do it right. And then you may have scurs if you don't do it well enough. This is the electric dehorner that we use. It's a Reinhardt. It's generally the one that everybody uses. This is the small one, the 3 8 inch, and I would recommend going a size up. I would not do this one because it will not work for boys because their horn um, bud is a lot bigger. This is what it looks like. You see it's hollow. You press this around the end of the horn down on the baby's skull until you get a nice copper ring. And most people recommend that you rock and you kind of do it and let off and then do it and then let off so that you don't overheat the baby. So that's what you would need. And I would recommend also a kid box. I also use this for tattooing because any goat that's gonna be registered has to be tattooed. And you stick the baby in there and their head pokes out and you lock the latch down. I'll link um, to the pattern. I actually think I got the pattern for that one from somebody from either Weedem and Reap or from Fias County Farms. Um, and I'll link, I'll link that down in the description for you if you're interested in building a kid box. I really recommend those. If you're gonna tattoo, if you're gonna dehorn, it's not great for shots because you can't get to anything but their head, but tattooing and dehorning, it's awesome. So if you're gonna have registered goats and you need to tattoo, then you can do it by yourself. That one's strong enough that I sit on top of it and the baby's horns right, the baby's head's right in front of me, and that works amazing. Pulled babies. So your other option is to bring in pulled genetics 
when we first started, that's what we wanted to do. We bought Twiz, who is cold, which means she's naturally hornless. She never had horns, she's never gonna have horns. 75% of the time, her babies are horned, or pulled, not horned. Um, pole genetics are the dominant trait, so you're more likely to get pulled with a pulled um, parent than not pulled. It's like brown eyes. If you don't want to deal with horns and you really don't want to disbud goats, then I would recommend trying to find some pole genetics. For us, it's been kind of like trying to find a unicorn, trying to find good milk genetics and pole genetics, but we are talking about possibly looking at buying a buck from a farm very far away that specializes in dairy and pulled to just kind of get away from horns altogether. We had um, some chicken and rice and bananas and an onion and Toonie's favorite are tomatoes. She's, they're really into the rice. That's probably the thing that they like the best that they get is rice, both of them. She really likes tomatoes. He really likes bananas. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave me a thumbs up. That really helps our channel. You guys have been doing awesome with the likes lately. Please give us a thumbs up. YouTube really started to promote us a little bit more. When we get to 1,000 subscribers, they will really start to promote our channel. So please hit that subscribe button. Ring that little notification bell so that you know every time we put out a new video. You guys have been watching our videos. It's been so amazing. We are so thankful for you guys. We are so close to a thousand subscribers, guys. We're like 150 away. We appreciate anything. If you're sharing our videos, if you're talking about our videos on your social media, that's awesome. Just really help us out to get to a thousand. We're really excited. We appreciate all of you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about today's video. Just buddy, yes, no, what do you think? We'll see you guys later. Say night, night, night. Say night, night. Bye, guys.